An Ananda alert has been activated for 16-year-old Karen Robinson of Keith District Brownstown, St. Anne, who has been missing since Saturday, September 21. She is of brown complexion and slim build. Reports from the Brownstown police are that about 4.30 p.m., Robinson was last seen at a service station in Brownstown, St. Anne. Her mode of dress at the time she went missing is a navy blue polo shirt, jean shorts, and navy green Crocs. All efforts to locate her have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Karen Robinson is asked to contact the Brownstown police at the number at the bottom of this screen, the police emergency number, or the nearest police station. A man was fatally shot by police during an alleged confrontation in Chudley, Manchester on Tuesday, with law enforcement also seizing a firearm at the scene. But the man's identity has not yet been released by the authorities. According to police sources, the incident occurred during a targeted operation in the Over River District of Chudley early Tuesday morning. The police, while conducting the raid, reportedly encountered the armed man. During the confrontation, the man was shot by the officers and later pronounced dead. A firearm was recovered at the scene, and police have launched an investigation into the circumstances surrounding the confrontation. More details are expected from the police as the investigation unfolds. The matter of the so-called Illicit Six adjusted to the Illicit Eight has been a talking point in the country for nearly two years running. The matter concerns parliamentarians who are under investigation for illicit enrichment. Members of the opposition PNP and the sections of civil society have clamored for those involved to name themselves. The Integrity Commission has maintained that the so-called gag clause in its enabling legislation limits the extent to which it can make public comments about ongoing investigations. It doesn't appear that answer has satisfied Jamaicans. The Blue Dot posters asked the sample of 1,246 eligible voters how they feel about the Integrity Commission's handling of the illicit six. Nearly 44% of respondents said they believed the matter of the illicit six was not being handled effectively by the Integrity Commission. 42.6% said they had concerns about the approach of the Integrity Commission. But this cohort of respondents say more time is needed to judge the Commission's effectiveness. Only 10.9% of respondents said they believed the matter of the illicit six was being handled effectively by the Commission. Nearly 3% had a different view of the matter. It should be noted the data collection for the nationwide Blue Dot polls powered by Total Tools ended two days after the Integrity Commission's Director of Investigation, Kevin Stevenson's report into Prime Minister Andrew Holness's financial affairs was tabled in the House of Representatives. A heavy traffic pileup occurred along the Mammy Bay Main Road in St. Anne on Tuesday morning following the grim discovery of a body by the police. According to authorities, the body, which has yet to be identified, was found by residents around 7 a.m. and immediately reported to law enforcement. Upon the police's arrival, the body of a male was found discarded in a dump heap along the roadside bearing what appeared to be multiple stab wounds to the upper body. The victim is described as having a dark brown complexion, approximately 5 feet 8 inches tall. At the time of discovery, the man was shirtless, wearing only black jeans and black sneakers. The police have cordoned off the area as they conduct investigations to determine the identity of the deceased and the circumstances surrounding his death. The discovery and subsequent police activity led to a significant traffic buildup in the area as commuters faced delays while law enforcement processed the scene. Authorities are appealing to anyone with information regarding the incident to come forward as they continue their investigation into the suspected murder. Tension rises in Craigtown after the father of a reputed gang leader shot dead. Craigtown St. Andrew is on edge 
Following the murder of 61-year-old Vincent Lyons, also known as Shortman, the father of a notorious gang leader, Lyons, a bar operator, was shot and killed near his business on Sunday evening, sparking fears of reprisals in the community. According to police reports, Lyons is the father of Rashid Lyons, who is currently being sought by authorities for his alleged involvement in gang-related activities. Rashid is the reputed leader of the 110 Gang, a group that has been locked in a violent turf war with the rival Gaza Gang in recent months. This ongoing feud has resulted in a string of murders and shootings within the area. The fatal shooting occurred around 8 p.m. as the elder Lyons was standing along the roadway talking to a friend. Gunmen suddenly appeared and opened fire, hitting him in the upper body. As Lyons attempted to flee, he collapsed inside a nearby premises. Police arrived swiftly and rushed him to Kingston Public Hospital, where he was pronounced dead while undergoing treatment. During the crime scene investigation, law enforcement recovered 14 spent shell casings, further evidence of the brutal nature of the attack. Fearing an escalation in violence, the police have responded with a heightened presence and have imposed a 48-hour curfew in Craigtown to prevent potential retaliatory attacks. In an effort to control the brewing tension, police have also named 11 men from the area as persons of interest. These individuals are believed to have crucial information regarding the ongoing gang feud. They have been urged to report to the Denham Town Criminal Investigations Branch by 6 p.m. on Tuesday. As the investigation continues, the community remains gripped by fear, with authorities working tirelessly to prevent further bloodshed. The police are appealing to residents to cooperate with their efforts to bring peace to the troubled neighborhood. Hey everyone, today I'm diving into the life and legacy of one of reggae's most iconic voices, Marcia Griffiths. From her early days in Jamaica to becoming a global sensation, Marcia Griffiths' journey is nothing short of legendary. Born in Kingston, Jamaica in 1949, Marcia started singing at a very young age. Her talent was undeniable, and by the time she was a teenager, she was already making waves in the local music scene. She got her big break in 1964 when she was discovered by the legendary producer Clement Coxone Dodd. Her debut single, Feel Like Jumping, instantly became a hit and Marcia Griffiths was on her way, but her story doesn't stop there. In the 1970s, Marcia joined forces with Bob Marley and the Wailers as part of the I-3s, the all-female vocal trio that provided those unforgettable harmonies. Alongside Rita Marley and Judy Mowat, Marcia helped shape the sound of one of the most influential bands in reggae history. Tracks like No Woman, No Cry and Three Little Birds wouldn't be the same without their soulful, uplifting harmonies. After Bob Marley's passing in 1981, Marcia continued to shine as a solo artist. Her 1982 hit Electric Boogie not only topped the charts, but also sparked a dance craze that still gets people moving today, the electric slide. Her versatility and ability to adapt to changing times have kept her relevant in the ever-evolving music industry. Marcia Griffiths' career spans over five decades, and she's still going strong. Her influence stretches far beyond reggae. She's been a mentor and inspiration to countless artists and continues to perform and record music that resonates with fans of all ages. Her voice filled with passion and soul has the power to uplift and inspire. Even today, Marcia Griffiths remains a beloved figure in the reggae community and beyond. She's performed at some of the biggest reggae festivals around the world and continues to release new music that keeps her legacy alive. Songs like Back in the Days and What Kind of World show that her message of love, unity and resilience is timeless. 
Marcia Griffith's journey is a testament to her incredible talent and unwavering dedication to her craft. From her early days in Kingston to becoming a global icon, she's shown us all the power of music to bring people together and create positive change. So, next time you hear one of her songs, take a moment to appreciate the legend behind the voice. Marcia Griffiths is more than just a reggae singer. She's a beacon of hope and inspiration for generations to come. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more reggae legends and their incredible stories. Until next time, keep the good vibes flowing. When we come, we say we know we will come. When we come, fire, 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 fire burning. Fire burning, burn, 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 the fire burning. Fire burning, burn, 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 the fire burning. Woo! Me back, me back, me back, me back.